Hello. It's good to be here today. Um, Nils and I work together in the School of Architecture and Design. And um, briefly, we'll kind of give you a perspective of uh, where we are as architects and designers and how we play a role um, with our community partners. As architects, we practice through designed and built things in the built environment. That's what we do. And as academics, we create collaborative projects. Uh, we document those, we write about them, and we distribute those lessons learned as broadly as we can. Uh, Nils and I decided um, to build on our interdisciplinary university efforts. And I'll say it started with Vicki. I always give her credit through the Center for Community Health and Development. Um, back in 2015, we were able to start to kind of make connections in Wyandotte County. And uh, Broderick is here today. He's our community partner through NBC Community Development Corporation that we um, really found uh, the voice and the capacity to work together. Um, we collectively um, we're research how policies have shaped the landscape of inequity in the built environment, um, how they have fractured our neighbors, neighborhoods through redlining practices. And through partnerships, we understand the social determinants of health frameworks and found a space for our discipline architecture to connect into through a community outreach program we call DOT Agency. Um, that's headed up by Nils, myself, and Matt Kleiman, a PhD student here at KU. Um, we've been in collaboration with many, many groups in Wyandotte County and as well involved hundreds of students at this point in projects. Um, students through courses and paid summer internships to complete projects that couldn't be completed in one semester and involved. And initially we inhabited a downtown Kansas City, Kansas um, abandoned storefront where we utilized as an off-campus classroom and space for exhibits and other events. I think that through this process, we created new engagement tools and processes that we hadn't ever um, explored before. We're meeting people where they are and making research and ideas available with efforts to collaborate with our community partners to have positive impact. Our area of focus is mostly on healthy eating and active living. Uh, I think through this process, we've discovered other ways of doing architecture that have expanded our field and creating new ways to implement our design thinking abilities. And I'll try to outline this briefly. Uh, first, storytelling, listening and learning from those that have a deep knowledge and set of experiences in the place is essential. Um, so often these stories and knowledge sets get lost. They're told, we hear them, and then they're gone at some level. Um, and uh, Javin and Terry here, um, more community partners focused on being bicycle advocates to help youth and others gain comfort in bicycling in KC are our citizen expert partners. They're finding safe and established spaces to critically improve active living. We couldn't do our work without them. So here you see a, a photo where we're working together to transcribe uh, you know, collected knowledge through time, a lot of time, um, to these maps. And out of that, we have the skills and the abilities to articulate um, where those networks and nodes are that we should focus upon. It's a spatial issue, right? Where, where should we go? What should we do? We help analyze that knowledge against larger data, data sets to make compelling cases for a set of actions to focus upon. We um, meet people where they are. That's essential to the work. Here we're at the Ivanhoe Farmer's Market where neighborhood residents from all ages come together. By making tools, in this case, an annotated map with sticky notes and a few free popsicles, uh, we get great uh, input right, from different people from different perspectives on what they think are the positive and the, and the needed assets of their community. Here you see an event um, at the KU Humanities um, supported us working with other partners here on campus to provide the opportunity to collect stories about a community's neighborhood in our community engagement Airstream trailer called the MoCo Lab. If you're interested in knowing more, please let me know. Um, but here we collected stories and those connect the residents to each other and with citizens outside of their, their groups. Um, collective thinking, this is essential. Through grant supported events such as these, we were able to create tools and sponsors of events for collective thinking. Here we're doing card sorting and that deep knowledge of the community expressed by a variety of viewpoints helps us understand priorities and next steps. Uh, we received a Gale Institute grant, um, nationally competitive uh, grant. We were able to develop more engaged tools, bring it to Wyandotte County. 
where with by supporting and hiring community mobilizers, we were able to develop gaming exercises and be able to find real tangible information about people's perceptions of their parks and their needs. Um, spatial agency, this is what we call um, individual and separate actions are collected in ways that through collaborative efforts, we can highlight those needs and efforts, opportunities. And you can see this large map in Northeast Wyandotte County where all of these images are uh, projects that we've worked with with our community partners. And you can see that it starts to establish a kind of community health uh, network, right? And collectively, we can create a larger idea. Here we see Broderick. Um, early on, we did these photo voice projects where a technique where you give everyone a camera, they print the images, and they tell stories about their understanding of spaces, access to food, um, active lifestyles. And, you know, again, collecting, this is our storefront where we have exhibits and we're able to kind of talk through really what should we do with this information that we've collected. You know, as architects and designers, we can start to com develop compelling graphics and stories and narratives that tell us where food is and where it's not. Um, and through this process, we can delegate power, right? We create tools and modes of communication that uh, make opportunities for a broad number of perspectives to make the best community-based decisions moving forward. Uh, three years ago, we started this process uh, looking at access to food with community partners, nonprofit organizations, and foundations. And through time, we've been able to identify uh, what foods, what healthy foods would best be uh, supported and needed, and ultimately bought this uh, used uh, beverage truck and turn it into a mobile market. Today, uh, it has, through COVID, we've been able to um, deliver over 6,500 6, USDA food boxes valued at about $267,000. Um, and it's through this kind of work, collective work, it now is a, it's owned by a community residents. We have a, um, they sh share governance and they have established a nonprofit um, status. So our work, transfers, it becomes uh, a citizen controlled uh, project, right? Uh, we are not in the business of delivering food, we are in the business of helping move these projects through our partners. Um, and consistent control ultimately in effect our collaborative efforts become controlled by its citizens. So citizens participation is citizen power. Um, we, we build these tools. If you want an article to read, Ladder of Citizen Participation by Sherry Arnstein, um, are, uh, and you can kind of see uh, the steps and with which we are trying to achieve citizen control. Um, you know, here's a project we're currently working on, just yet another easy tool where we're looking at accessibility to walking in the communities. Where are there sidewalks? Where are there not? What needs need to happen? Again, this kind of transfer and understanding that citizens um, through tools that we can make accessible, all ages can start to um, deliver and understand what their needs are. And by uh, providing that space for conversation with decision makers, we can actually make real um, investments and differences in our neighborhoods. So I'm gonna let you talk, uh, hear Niels for a few minutes or a minute on prototype. Yeah, well, we just that we do quickly. In our, uh, one of the things we do in our curriculum is we have an opportunity for students to use their hands to actually make things. And this is just one, one example. We made that truck, um, all those tools for engagement, you saw the kind of panels and that sort of thing. But this is a project we worked on with Broderick where we um, decided to put some exercise stations in Jersey Creek Park. And so there's a, a project that a student uh, you know, thought up um, and rendered. Then we kind of physically built some prototypes. We took them out to the community to see what it would be like in Jersey Creek Park. We took it to a health fair at NBC um, to um, have people try it out and give us some feedback. And ultimately, we built, you know, uh, five of these things, put them in the park, so that now they're they're um, for anybody to use. Um, kind of takeaways that we have here um, is really about you know trusting your community partners to come up with good ideas and to bring the projects to you instead of forcing our design ideas on them and then translating that work, um, prototyping for kind of actual physical hands-on testing and then the ultimate goal of sort of building agency where we work not for people but with them. Thank you very much.